I'm just going to wait for people to join, as always, and um, then get cracking. So, I'm just going to check that this is, is working. I know it's working now. So, hello to you all. And, um, a little bit nervous as always doing these lives. Um, it's actually easier for me to do a live to do with energy, be, being energy, than it is um, talking. Um, because this, this live, um, at least for the first part, um, I'll be going into technical information. Um, on how energy works and how reality works and so for that I have to try and use my brain <laughs> um, and and be in my brain in order to try and be as as concise as I can be to give the clarity of, of what I'm about to explain and I always try and speak in a way that incorporates anybody um, whether they're awakened or, or unawakened so I try to do <coughs> excuse me a, a simple approach to it um, what I'm about to explain is is hard to actually translate into words uh, I know it within me uh, I get it but trying to say it in in a way that's clear is is actually quite hard so please bear with me um and i see this there's, there's more people in now so um i'll probably get cracking now okay um so for those of you that watch the video i did with alethea from carta astral it, um in february um i'm just gonna go over in minute detail um, the data I gave in that video. If you haven't seen it and you want all the detail then you can find it here on Facebook or you can go to my YouTube channel and just look look for that video in English or Spanish um, and it gives lots more detail. Um, but I have to backtrack to that in order to explain um, more data. Okay. So I've got lots of drawings and it's just going to be a bit like a, a storyboard um, explaining and as always really um, the highest truth of it all will come at the end of the um, explanation. So we're going to take it in, in layers really. So just to go backwards um, to a learning dream I had in um, January this year 2022 um, I'll show you two pictures and uh, this is one picture of the learning dream where I was um, consciousness in the dream I knew when the dream started I was being shown everything backwards so I knew that uh, everything I was seeing or being shown as I traversed time and space and outside time and space although I was being shown it in one direction it was also happening in the opposite direction and this was happening all at the same time. So I knew this at the start of the dream as consciousness and my consciousness traversed past the planet, past earth. Then I went into this void space that I literally cannot remember, um, a total blank within the dream. And then I carried on as consciousness until I reached source or the divine God spark, the original spark of creation. The next part of that learning dream, bearing in mind that source point, 
was that I was shown one at a time so not all together but I was shown in consecutive order and this is not the order I can't remember the order of, of rays but I was shown that source was emitting say the orange ray then source emitted a concentric circle of the purple ray and then source emitted from its core a concentric circle of the blue ray etc etc okay so it wasn't that source emitted the rainbow spectrum all at once source god the divine however you choose to call that original point um, emitted it one after the other after the other after the other so i that's why i've drawn them this way okay so i needed to tell you that in context but the full details of all of that is is in that other video i mentioned okay so we've got the context of source emitting um, the rays of the rainbow one at a time now let's go back to planet earth and um, the perceptional world the visual world that uh, mankind has been used to seeing used to seeing <laughs> okay um, So I'm going to take you through a series of drawings that I've done today. This is information I've been getting over the last two weeks, but a piece fell into place today at the end. And um, that's why I've decided to, to do this live because I, I truly understand it, even if I can't explain it very well. I'm not academic. I don't read academic things i don't study anything everything i receive or know comes from within me as data that gets unpackaged so i'm not technically minded and you're going to have to forgive me for that but in terms of the sun what we're used to seeing what every uh, sort of the typical sight through our eyes that we're used to seeing a solid reality with the light or the white light comes from the sun to the planet okay and when there is rain that white light goes through the raindrops and the the drop of of it's actually liquid light the water on our planet is liquid light I can't emphasize that enough um, it, it's a huge clue for mankind but the water goes through the droplet of water the, the ray goes through the droplet of water which acts like a prism and then it separates out the white light into the rainbow spectrum that we see as that physical rainbow yeah I've drawn a tree by the rainbow to illustrate a point later on okay but hopefully that's clear of what we see when we see a rainbow wherever we are in the world we see a half rainbow we see half a circle and that is because our physical frequency which denotes our eyesight has a limited range as you know the energies of the planet the energies of mankind the energies of everything everywhere is is heightening we're all raising energetic frequency and as we raise energetic frequency um, so our sight changes to the higher frequency that we will then perceive by um, and hopefully I'll have time to talk about that later on if I don't talk too much so what I want to emphasize here is that when any of us see a rainbow in our lives we only see half of it we only see half 
a circle. Catch. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. <laughs> I want to show you the truth at a higher level, not the ultimate level. I will get to the ultimate level, but I want to show you now the truth at a higher level in terms of that rainbow. Sorry, my camera's back to front because I'm on an iPad now that I'm back in the caravan. So the higher truth is that that rainbow is a circle and it's just that our eyes don't see below. And I feel that some of that is to do with um, the liquid light that is the water because when the water comes down it goes through the trees etc and then it hits the the earth itself and it's at that point we with our own physical limited lens because of the frequency that our eyes are used to seeing at don't see the whole circle so in a way it's a beautiful analogy of as above so below it's not a half circle every time we see a rainbow it's it's a full circle and I'll come back to to that tree okay because um, I want to explain how we see in what people call 5d or the the higher earth some people call it so the next join is is of everybody all over the world and hopefully you can see I've tried to draw lots and lots of rainbows all over the world so no matter where we are on the planet somebody in Sydney could see a rainbow somebody in America South America um, Africa Canada Spain Europe China we're all seeing rainbows when we have the gift of the liquid light that acts as a prism that allows us to see half of what's true half of the whole picture but the thing is with that is to remember we're in a an experience of time and space and so when we hear of somebody um, seeing a rainbow in America say we feel separate to that because we're in say England and they may have seen it at a particular time of day so we're very um, influenced in the human experience in the 3d and the 4d by time and space but what I'm trying to illustrate with this is that our, our eyes only see part of the picture because our energetic frequency bandwidth as a human being has been at a certain place until approximately 2012 when it started to increase so our sight, our hearing, our voice, our everything is, is increasing, which means the spectrum that we hear, see, feel, feel at uh, sensitivity is sky high around the planet right now. It is a gift. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It, it will be shown as that double-edged sword that ended up as a true gift um, eventually but not right now sensitivity is super high on the planet but eventually that sensitivity will become everybody's gift okay I've digressed already so um, I can't remember yeah so the physical eyes can see the rainbows all over the world and you could assume because we're in time and space so I see a rainbow here, you see a rainbow there, another friend sees one in um, New Zealand, okay? You could assume 
logically that we're all seeing different rainbows. <laughs> Sorry, I keep giggling. It's just I know what's next. <laughs> so, um, and please just take what resonates. And, and if this does not resonate with you, please just leave it be because um, all that matters is, is your own perception and what does actually truly resonate with you. Okay. So we could perceive that between us all, we have witnessed millions, billions, zillions of rainbows all over the planet. My knowledge today is that uh, that isn't the case. <laughs> uh, this is the case. We all see the same rainbow and this is the part that you might need to go back to and I, I don't say that in a in a bad way or any sort of patronizing way it's just that um, my level of ability of explaining this is poor because I receive the data within me it's light data, it unpackages and suddenly I just know. And that's how it happens with everybody. That's how new information comes into all of us. It's the light data unpackages and bing, we just know, we just know things. But my level of ability of explaining it is going to be poor. So it isn't that all of us see different rainbows at different times within time and space. The higher truth to that is that we're always, each of us, when we see a rainbow, we're looking at the same rainbow. Because that, r those rays that create that rainbow spectrum are already around Mother Earth. And what it is, is that we get the opportunity to be shown some of it when liquid light, which is water, appears between the sun and Mother Earth. And it doesn't have to be the rain, it could be um, a waterfall and the rainbow appears. If you go to the seaside, the ocean, and you see the sun dancing as sparkles of light on the water or a lake. If you focus on the sparkle itself, one sparkle of water, you can see the rainbow around the sparkle. So it's only that the liquid light creates a prism and places the rainbow over there on the horizon in between the tree and the mountains you'll know that whenever because i've done this when you chase rainbows you might be driving and you want to follow the rainbow you never get there and that's that's the clue you never get to the rainbow the rainbow always moves position why because it's one rainbow we're all seeing the same rainbow um, <clears throat> so to take this drawing further to explain the rest of the drawing again take time to to absorb it or go back to it if it's a little bit too mind-blowing because um, it is hard for me to explain if we take source god creator everything was created in one instant moment so if we go back to that learning dream that i had in january that one my consciousness knew that everything was happening at the same time but it was going backwards and forwards so I knew that not only was God creating the rainbow light from itself, 
like that. But I knew that we were also receiving that rainbow light at the same time. And I knew that that void where the question mark is, the place that I can't remember in the dream, um, was literally, I realized today, was the space of, of, it was the void. It was the space where there is no time. There is no space. And so there was absolutely nothing to remember there, but it, it, was, it was an unknown place in the dream. So everything is created from creator in the same instant moment. Um, and so we all know that the divine is within us. And so God created a series of rays of light to represent itself, aspects of itself, which were frequency and vibration, out 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 in the same instant moment and created everything as an image of itself and so that includes the sun the stars the planets our mother earth it also includes you so all the way around you because everything everything outside source is is a sorry i've got my finger over it but it's a micro it's a microcosm of the macrocosm everything outside of source and so not only does mother earth have the same uh, lighted pattern that source emanated out of itself in order to observe itself and learn about itself not only does mother earth have it but so do you so does everybody so does everything it or everything is a micro of the of the macro so that's what i want to kind of explain is that i'm just going to pause a bit to to regroup my thoughts because uh, it, it is hard thinking in a concise way um but that's what i want to explain is is to try and bring together the pieces of the puzzle that because without these pieces it, it there's always this separation between this and that if i'm sure you've heard of people um speaking or writing about the higher dimensional earth or what they call 5d earth and some people i've heard have said that when they see it everything is brighter everything is far more vivid in color okay so if we go back to one of these drawings of the tree there we go when you next look at a rainbow okay you could try this is to look at the objects that are in front of the rainbow and you will see you will categorically see that those objects whether it's a tree a car um, a mountain um, a person you will see that everything is brighter everything why why is it all brighter in front of the rainbow is be because you're seeing you're seeing in a, in a sense with the rainbow rays and that, that's hard for me to put in any other way but physically the clues are there in our reality and so when people talk about 5d earth higher earth being brighter and more colorful and more vivid in color it, it's actually because we'll be seeing this we'll be seeing through this all of it all of the time so the permanent state of consciousness that views 5d earth 
sees a brighter spectrum of colour because it's seeing, our eyes are then seeing at a higher frequency through the rainbow concentric circles of rays that are always present in 5D. So I've probably got a bit more time just to explain a bit about 5D is that because I've wanted to do this for ages because I know especially newly awakened people um, it can get confusing when people talk about a different planet uh, a higher earth um, a 5D earth as if it's somewhere over there in in a different sort of physical place so I just want to hopefully help with that by explaining it properly um, the, the 5D earth it's a perception meaning that we we have a human form and to use just this now uh, where is it the earth itself we have a physical form a body on a solid earth okay a solid reality how we view that reality is based on our frequency of Hertz or you could say our consciousness level so it's not that another planet Earth is is over there no it's already here and when we just like the the rainbow around planet Earth and around the Sun and around source it's already there it's just that we're raising our frequency to be able to see from a higher state of consciousness the 5d planet earth that is already there and and some of you that experience 5d i'm sure um, you'll probably agree with me and say it's not permanent at the moment because we haven't reached that permanent state of always always being in that higher frequency we, we're always we're like the sine wave and so our energy is always always fluctuating and and if we get too involved in in 3d or too involved in conversation too involved in another person's thoughts or or conversation is is actually the the thing the, the one thing that really takes you down in your energy um, not because of what's being said at all okay I want to emphasize that it could be but <laughs> not always it's the fact that linear conversation requires us all to tune into the brain which is what I'm doing now to explain to you which is why my voice is different to when I I do some other sort of um, energy sharing with you my voice is softer because I'm in a, a different frequency of vibration so any conversation that human beings have with each other whether it's the speaking or the listening requires us to tune in to the processor the mind and that it, it, it we, we can stay in a higher state of con consciousness for so long but if it's hours upon hours of listening to someone talk or us talking we then stay in the mind um, because the the linear language human beings use and I am digressing now a lot but the linear language human beings use has been vastly exaggerated over eons and eons of time and so we use far more words than are actually necessary and yet we feel they are in order to communicate ourselves um, but that's probably another conversation because I really feel I am going off track now um, but just to to say that that the 5d experience is temporary at the moment um, by degree of, of, of everybody we're all different we spend different lengths of time experiencing it or not experiencing it 
Um, but the point is that everybody, everybody that's here, everybody that's choosing to stay, everybody is headed there and it will become permanent. And that's when we, we see uh, a completely, we see visually a completely different reality. But it's not just that we see differently, it's that we hear differently, we tune in. There's a lot to the higher dimensional earth that could get explained, but it really is for another life to do. Um, but we don't work the brain processor the way we're doing now. We don't. And I know I've said this before in lives, is that it is an entirely different way of living, an entirely different way of being. Um, and I'm um, just hoping that I'm still live. I think I am. Yes, I am. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's like changing the... This is the best analogy I can have for what it is like to be permanently in 5D. It's like changing the operating system of our brain, which is why, you know, it is a step by step process for everyone. And actually, we all take the same steps. We do. We just have different stories that take us along the steps. That's all a different perspective. But, but in consciousness terms, we, we all take those same steps. Um, to raise in, raise in our consciousness. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but I've also added another uh, diagram and I'm gonna post these pictures uh, on Facebook after this live. But it's, it, it's not directly related to what I've just said about the rainbow spectrum but it also is directly related to it. Um, it is something I've talked about before and I recall doing a live where I, I did a little exercise with everybody to help them transcend consciousness um, here actually on the farm um, a couple of years ago. But I'm sharing this so that it helps newcomers um, understand um, different states of consciousness that um, many will be experiencing or start to experience and it's something that you can actually practice as well yourself and so it is related to the rainbow light spectrum but it, it, it's also related to a, a bigger picture in the sense of God's creation is that if we work backwards um, sorry it's just I see everything back to front so it's really hard there we go if we work backwards we experience a solid reality it's actually photon light that's condensed that's all solidity is it's a condensed form of light that vibrates to a lower energetic frequency. So this diagram, in a sense, is perfect analogy also for our ascending path or our path to enlightenment, whatever you prefer to call it. These are consciousness states so and steps on the path. We then go to the, before the solid light, condensed light, so this physical reality that we all live by and experience in, before that was liquid light. So before anything could be created as a solid form, it was liquid light state. Okay, which is a semi-condensed light. Before the liquid light was created was the gold light, which I call alchemical light because it's people with the ability to tune into the 
alchemical light that can transform um, many things okay and then before the gold light was created was the one and only white light of source the nothing and the everything where there is no time no space no solidity whatsoever so the way you can um, practice if you wish to um, learning or, or, or beginning to experience all of those states that I've just shown you is um, is a practice that if you have your eyes keep your eyes open excuse me I need a drink okay you keep your eyes open and they might sting because you're going to try not to blink um, it's nothing to do right now <laughs> something to do when you're on your own and not being disturbed um, so that you can um, lose, lose all your thoughts yeah and and focus entirely on the exercise so it's always with your eyes open and you're trying not to blink but initially your eyes if you're not used to it they will start to sting and just bear with that because um, your practice will get you through that and then your eyes don't sting and you can just keep your eyes open without blinking for a long period of time longer and longer and longer and longer so you do get used to it um, so to practice looking at anything it could be the carpet in your room a blade of grass uh, or the grass um, a tree anything at all and look at it and stop defining it it's not a tree it's not a blade of grass it's not the carpet so stop giving it meaning in other words and just allow your eyes to simply see no longer the human defining the world you're just seeing if you keep that focus without the thoughts coming in keep the thoughts away if you keep that focus eventually if it was a carpet say the carpet would start to appear to vibrate it would start to move like this and the same with the grass or whatever else you're looking at it starts to vibrate it starts to move and at that point it's easy to blink and come out of it and think but don't this is why it takes practice stay with the vibration of what's moving you're not defining it you're not even thinking oh look this is vibrating no keep your thoughts away and allow your sight to just see liquid light because suddenly that solid it what it is is your consciousness is rising and rising and that's what you're practicing by doing this exercise and because your consciousness is rising so your reality in front of your eyes is changing as you raise frequency which kind of explains why i'm telling you all this because as we as we go higher in energetic frequency we will see hear, feel um, so much more than humanity is used to so you stay with the carpet say moving like this vibrating stay with it don't think no blinking if you can stay with it with practice that carpet will then turn gold or the grass will then turn gold into gold light and if you can keep your focus no thinking carry on traversing higher and higher in your consciousness no defining the gold once it gets to gold ray light in front of your eyes 
that's when what looks or appears to be an object then becomes pure white light. It becomes nothing. If you did this, for example, with a whole landscape in front of you, you could do it with a whole landscape and at the same process, you'd experience the same stages of you shifting your consciousness into a higher state of consciousness until that landscape, which could be miles that you're looking at, there's no images in it, there's no objects, it's just pure white light in front of you. So it is that, it's not that, um, you know, it, it, it's quite hard for people to grasp about 5D and, um, or what people call higher earth, new earth, because they see it as separate in a sense, or they can do, should I say, excuse me. Um, but it is that it's already here. It's just that our consciousness is ascending, um, going into a higher and higher frequency, which means that our perception is able to incorporate a wider, higher range of frequencies that we couldn't see before. So I hope that helps. Okay. So, um, I don't know how long I've been on for, um, but I feel that I should leave it there. I was going to go on to some support for this timeline, but um, I don't know if I've spoken for too long. I, I wouldn't want to bore you. <laughs> I guess, okay. So. If you don't need support, then turn this off now. <laughs> um, and this is going to be human support married in with um, esoteric knowledge. Okay, so if you don't need that and you just wanted the technical, then um, now's the good time to turn off. And, um, and I will just have a drink and a moment to pause so that I can drop it out of my brain um, and and just be with this now moment and this timeline that we're all in. So just give me a minute and I'm not gonna switch this off. I just need a minute to and come a little bit out of the brain from that technical information. Okay, give me a minute. So what I'm about to explain has many layers to it and everybody will relate to it at the layer that they perceive by. I want to share a learning dream from 2017 that I have visited many times. I say that laughing at myself. 
because so many times I felt I was in this place of the learning dream. And that's why I emphasize there are many layers. Those of you that read my posts, etc., I explain the size, the spiral, and how we revisit and revisit and we revisit on, on this cyclical lighted pattern. But if we're ascending, we revisit it at a higher level and then a higher level. And, we, and this is all to do with the solar um, cycle. If we're not ascending, we, we revisit it at the same level or layer. Um, but if we are choosing to ascend, then we, we can see on the solar cycle of, of month, of this year, that year, that year, that we actually visit the same spaces, but at a different esoteric level or layer. So I'm saying that first because um, I've been at this place so many times <laughs> in the last few years. And uh, it feels that to share this learning dream would help people. Okay relate to these times. It will help people relate to these times. And I'll explain why afterwards. So the learning dream started by seeing buildings in dissolving, falling, crashing, bricks falling buildings just collapsing which signified the collapse of 3D and 4D. I was in the dream. I witnessed everything collapsing down and I chose to walk away. I walked away on my own. Away from burning buildings uh, that were just falling like cards and this young man young boy teenager perhaps then suddenly appeared and chose to walk with me and I didn't know who he was I walked for miles and miles and miles away from the mayhem the intensity the falling, the fire, so much fire and I seemed to walk for miles and the further I walked away the more relaxed I felt the quieter it got the sounds of the dissolving, crashing reality were getting lower and lower in volume and the space became quieter and quieter. But as I walked, I didn't know where I was walking to and there was nothing really to see. It was barren landscape. I just knew I had to walk away. Suddenly, there appeared what I term a substation. It just suddenly appeared and I knew it was a galactic substation. So I walked in with this boy next to me. Oh, forgotten a bit. On the journey away from the fire of the, the buildings burning and buildings collapsing, I was coughing and coughing and coughing. So my throat and my throat chakra felt very damaged and on the walk away which seemed to take hours in the dream I was always trying to clear my throat coughing away it was very dry it was felt burnt so at the substation I walked into the building 
and I could see a being there and I asked as a human being I asked for a drink of water could I have a drink of water and the being said yes of course gave me a drink of water I can't tell you what that water was like it was, it was just bliss because the throat was so dry but as soon as I drank the glass of water I put the glass down and I vomited up a light tablet that was the colour blue and green. This is a learning dream I had uh, 2017 so I've had a long time to understand it and of course my consciousness has changed since the learning dream. So I now know and have known for a while that that light tablet that was vomited up was actually the human experience being given out, given back, given back. In other words, that light tablet was data of the human experience. But what I'd like you to understand in terms of this timeline is the way I perceive it now is that it's not just the giving up of the human experience we've had so far or the, 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 the will to let go of it. It's actually the giving up of the programmed mind and the giving up of the personality that has allowed each of us to have such vastly varied experiences for our soul to experience through. So to me, as I say, I've visited this space so many times in the last few years with different meanings because of the spiral. What I want to say, and the reason I've just shared that about the giving up of the personality and the being willing to, it, that's what it's about. It's, it's having that will to not, <coughs> excuse me, to not be attached to the personality, to your personality, my personality, to not be attached to the way you think and not be attached to the mind. And the reason I feel this is so poignant for this timeline is because in that 5D reality, that higher dimensional reality, we don't operate via the same operating system. It's an entirely different processor. Just to use a word, I'm using it, I can't think of another word, but it's an entirely different operating system. So if we are a person wishing to ascend to the 5D and everybody that's staying here is, then we're going to each in our own time come to that place where we are happy, we are finished, we are willing to let go of the mind's operating system we have lived by every single day and we're willing to let go of this overlay because that's all it ever was an overlay that we call the personality that is not the true self it's not the higher self the higher self is not the personality that was the experience to have in forgetfulness via the personality so it's a willingness to let go of the personality why? Because of the next part of the dream that I'm about to tell you. So I vomited out this, it sounds awful doesn't it? <laughs> but it was actually nice to see. <laughs> but it was a, a tablet of light and it was blue and green and it just came out. Of, of my throat and out of my mouth and the little boy next to me the young boy he also drank his water and he vomited up his tablet but his was grey 
and I think the only reason his was great was for me to see a difference, if you like. So the galactic being said when I gave back the light tablet, which you could also define as the crystalline program that I've spoken about years ago that we, we choose to come in with, the giving up of that program. Once I'd done that, the galactic said, would you mind if I keep that? Because I think it would be to, of interest for those that journey through. So I said, no, you keep it. I then walked away to a window area of this substation and I sat down on my own and just breathed. And it felt like I was breathing for the first time. When I sat there, there was no thoughts going through my head at all. It was complete silence in here. And, and now I know it's because it was given up. So I sat there and recuperated for what seemed like five minutes with no thoughts and then suddenly without warning without knowing in a sudden second I was catapulted into a brand new reality which was 5D and then I, I was there experiencing 5D so why am I saying this now because all over the world people humanity are experiencing their own timeline as well as the collective timeline so we're all on one collective timeline but we're all having our individual experiences on our own unique micro timeline it's necessary for in order to ascend, in order to let go of what we hold on to, what we're attached to, it's necessary to derail what seems to be a normal reality, to derail people's lives. You see, the human personality and I mean the personality not the consciousness not your consciousness but every human personality in their own unique personality will always look for something that makes them feel safe they'll always look outside of them for something that makes them feel safe that something could be uh, a family, it could be a partner, it could be a job, it could be that your country's in peace. But for this mass ascension, and I emphasize the word mass because everybody's at different stages of ascension, but we're all converging into the same point. We're all converging. It's just that people have chosen different times to do it that's all but everybody that's here and staying is ascending to this or we're going to experience the higher frequency reality but in order for them to choose that we have to sort of unbuckle or let go of what we're holding on to it could be a job it could be a career it could be an idea if I go there, I'll feel safe. If I do this, I'll feel safe. So for everybody, for every unique individual, whatever anybody holds to that makes them feel safe will get derailed. It will come undone to not as a bad thing, but 
as ultimately as we walk our steps as a good thing. It's a timeline for everybody, everybody, to find out for themselves, by themselves, that they were always safe. And that safety comes from within you. It was always there. It was always inside every single human being. When we don't feel safe, again, if I look to the world stage, when people don't feel safe, individuals don't feel safe, they will do one or two things, which, which is kind of the same thing. They, they will either seek to control their environment, seek to control their life, seek to control other people's lives, or they will go into fear. both, and I'm going to say this, holding everybody, okay, holding everybody in love, whether it's control or whether it's fear, I say it with kindness that that is simply a reaction from the mind, and more precisely, it's a reaction, and please bear with me with this because I will explain it with loving kindness. It's a reaction from a part of the mind that we call the ego mind. Because eons ago, when the human being was created in its present form, the human being was given a very small program. I've explained this, I know, before in a previous life, but I want to explain it again for newcomers. We were... We, we were given as a lighter design a particular small program and it was the fight or flight program which was only designed to keep us safe and alive with a human body our human body so in other words if um, a rhino came up we'd probably run a mile but if um, you know, to, that came up to eat us or fight us, we would probably run a mile. But if um, a rabbit came up to fight us or eat us, we'd probably fight it because it's smaller than us, you know? So this particular lighted design was, was given for the purest of intentions, which was just to safeguard the physical vessel. Um, and so it was a program of fight or flight. But what happened over eons of time was that that program got manipulated and distorted and enlarged. And so if we look to the present day, we can react from fear or control um, on a variety of things, not just uh, being eaten alive by an animal, but it could be something somebody says, or it could be uh, somebody's desire to control us, or um, we don't agree with this person or a member of our family. It's, it's what happened to the ego over millions of years, is, is it got changed, altered, um, and then we went through that experience and so of the ego being enlarged and, and used um, actually to the detriment of the purity of who we are. And so it is that ego that one by one we dissolve a piece at a time as anything presents to us individually in our reality. So. If ever there is anything outside of you that triggers you, it never really is about them, or this place, or this circumstance. It's, it's usually always about either a belief that's running in you that creates the trigger, or it's a behavioral pattern that you've adopted, 
and created to safeguard you from the ego. It's safeguarding you, you see. It's trying to look after you, trying to preserve you. And it's a behavioral pattern we have learned or adopted to help us exist in the world, to help us live in the world, to help us get through. When? Only when? We don't feel safe. So over these years um, that humanity has, has you know, evolved, um, we looked for the out, to the outside for safety. And it's this timeline. It really is um, where everybody's lives, one way or another, are getting derailed. Uh, and so it's, it is a gift that you can feel within you an ever-present safety. You are safe. You've always been safe. You've always been that divine spark, always connected to source. And the human experience was a temporary experience of forgetfulness, of disconnection to source. So we are in the timelines that we, we knew would be coming. It really is kind of different for everybody. So it could be that one day, you know, your friend is, is very upset and feeling stressed or your member of your family and you feel absolutely fine and then next week you'll feel something will happen in your timeline that will derail you and then that other person over there is absolutely fine and it's because we're, we're all in our individual timelines where we're all being sort of pushed into turning inward for our inner strength and our inner energy and I I'd no longer like to use the word inner power, it's only a recent thing, because people can misperceive that as getting the swords out and um, flinging the swords around in defence. When you're in your sovereign field, when, when you are in tune and in touch with the God within you, there's no need for defence. So. It is a timeline where lots of people, because of their own circumstances, whatever they are, all over the world, they will turn ever inward and actually feel within them a safety that they can always rely on. And once you feel that eternal safety of the divine within you, you know that no matter what happens to you, no matter what circumstances you find yourself in, you can turn to that for your strength. And it will bring you a peace that allows you to then take a next step or to just stand still. So I should leave it there because I've talked for a long time I could talk and talk about that, about the safety, about this timeline. Um, you know, I go back to it over the years so many times that it's not what I say that matters. It's, it's how you take your steps that matters. It's not what another person does or says. It, it's about you turning to yourself because it's it's reconnecting you all the time at different levels higher and higher and higher and higher levels all the time every time you turn to yourself and question yourself you don't need to question anyone or any of the outer reality because you're here to ascend you're here because you've chosen this experience you're here because you're going to be elevating in consciousness to the 5D reality 
And the only way to do that is this way, inside, reconnects you. And then you find that you are the, your own source of strength. And you can radiate it out. Love. And be that. And it's always there, no matter what happens to you in life. You can always, once you find that safety within you, you don't have to know anything about what's happening in the next stage of your life. Which brings me back to the substation before the, the leap in the learning dream that I explained and this timeline. I'll just finally touch on this because it really does bring it all together with this timeline is that um, everybody all over the world are in a space of not knowing. I, I've kind of pointed to this so many times I know you're probably sick of me saying it but for every individual there is a vast massive not knowing and there's a beautiful reason for that a beautiful reason is that none of us including myself I, I put myself into this is is not knowing the next stage not knowing the next step not knowing what to do next it's a complete not knowing And if you're finding that uncomfortable, drop into not knowing. Go quiet and drop into not knowing. And you will reach a state of just being. Just being with the not knowing. And when you are just being with the not knowing, you automatically experience a state of peace. And so, you can be at peace with not knowing. Which takes me back to the learning dream I had, I think January, that I shared with you about this passageway and about a, like a, a, a cave that seemed quite dark and you couldn't see the step in front of you. You did not know where you were going. That's the walk of faith to walk those steps yourself in not knowing but being at peace that you don't know and nor does anybody else people can think they know but, but this is a, a passageway of utter faith that people one by one by one are turning to reconnection to God So to just allow these weeks, if you feel uncertain about your life or what you should be doing or where you should be going or who you should be with, etc, etc. If you feel uncertainty, find peace in being in uncertainty and just take the one next step in front of you. Just one step. And I say that... Um, for a good reason that one step and this, this next bit again I, I want to emphasize please just take it if it resonates and if it doesn't just leave it be but I say take one step in front of you and then the next and that one step might be just to wake up tomorrow morning and then decide what to do that day but just be in not knowing and take slow down and take one step and then the next and let the next one unfold for you and then the next one unfold for you rather than try and forge ahead and plan because any planning guess where it's coming from it's coming from the linear mind that we're letting go of we're not taking that linear mind with us so any planning of things to do in the future will Unless you're permanently in 5D, in which case if you were in 5D permanently, you wouldn't be planning. <laughs> because it's all the now moment. We live in the present moment, every single moment in 5D. Um, so there is no planning. So my greatest advice, and please just take any of that and leave it, 
if it doesn't resonate. But my greatest advice to all of you is just to take the next step in front of you, even if that next step is just making a cup of tea. And find your peace and your strength and your energy within you at knowing this is the time of great uncertainty of not knowing and it's designed especially for the mass population to go inward and to find faith to let go of how their world was how their life was why because we don't take any of it with us the 5d is a completely utterly different way of experiencing this world with your solid body a completely different way a new way so we don't take anything with us except this our body and our love and all those belief systems all those behaviors and the human operating system we give back we give up so I'm going to shut up now. Can't believe how long I've talked. I hope some of this has helped. I hope you feel supported. Just take your time each day. There is actually nothing to rush for. There's no race. But there's everything to become. Just trust. Take that walk of faith. Knowing you're held and you are always safe and you are safe with every step you take. Okay. I love you all so much. With all of my heart, I'm beaming love. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.